it's time for you to admit it to yourself, Kurt. Maybe it's time to open the closet door, oh, Kurt. No! Like the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on those notifications. And once you're done, leave a comment down below and I just might end up responding. Vince McMahon is very well known for his complete inability to accept his own past decisions. If he wants to rewrite the very pages that make up the history books, he'll do as he goddamn well pleases. The chairman of WWE has had numerous incidents and even entire wrestlers removed from the history books, whether they were taken off the network or just never shown again. I'm D. Wicket, and these are 10 WWE moments that they tried to delete. Shout out Matt Hardy. Number 10, the Rockers win the tag team titles. The one moment I'd say WWE succeeded in deleting because, you know, of the circumstance, the Rockers are widely regarded as the single greatest tag team to never win the titles, despite technically defeating the Hart Foundation for the belts in a match that saw the turnbuckles collapse. Uh, there you see the problem. During the East, one of the falls, the rope broke, the top rope broke. And we were sitting there like, hey, this is, you know, sorry, I made a bill, what do we do? While this didn't necessarily have to mean a reverse decision on the match, WWF had changed their minds almost immediately about the Rockers winning and decided, hey, loophole, let's return those belts to the Hart Foundation and for the blunder, the Rockers have never been recognized of their original win. <laughs> Number nine, Candice Michelle's first job. My guest tonight has been a little bit of a media darling. One of the most recognizable names from the female division throughout the 2000s, Candice Michelle debuted in 2005 on an episode of Chris Jericho's Highlight Reel. The WWE wasn't actually her first time with a spotlight on her though. In fact, she was well known enough to the point where WWE actually felt it was necessary that they had to address her previous job on air. So they had Jericho and Michelle discuss the possibility of another wardrobe malfunction. Function. Wardrobe malfunction! Wardrobe malfunction! Whoa, 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 just hold on a cotton picking sister, second sister! <sighs> Her previous job was with GoDaddy.com. Yikes. Miss Capelli? Yes, I'd like to be on a commercial. And what will you be advertising? GoDaddy.com. Oh my gosh. And speaking of yikes, this segment was followed by a match with Muhammad Hassan. And speaking of Muhammad Hassan, number eight, many, many, many WWE careers. Muhammad Hassan finds himself with very good company, such as CM Punk, AJ Lee, the fabulous Moolah, Chris Benoit, and even Hulk Hogan for a solid stretch of three years. There's plenty of other names and they've all got their reasoning, whether it's the public statements against the company, racism, or just straight up ruthless criminal activity. There's a pretty big handful of wrestlers whose entire history have completely been hidden under covers and never even referenced again. Please. Greg Hamilton, if you will. Number seven, the Gay Olympics. Wow, what a concept. This is almost a South Park episode. In an opening segment on an episode of Monday Night Raw where Kurt Angle and Stephanie were discussing their non-relationship, Triple H came out to ruin the fun by revealing that he had evidence that Kurt Angle was a gay man. Not that there's anything wrong with that. No, of course not. The evidence was literally Angle winning his gold medal crying and hugging the ref. Yikes. Maybe national television wasn't a good place for me to call you out on this, but it explains a lot, Kurt. Even bigger yikes to the crowd who audibly chanted faggot after Mick Foley came out to also make some gay jokes to Angle, Jesus. You are a member of the United States Olympic team. What I'm wondering in the year 2000 is what team are you playing for now? Now wait a minute! But the biggest yikes, just wait, the biggest yikes goes out to WWE for removing this segment not because of the homophobia, but because the Olympics are fucking psychopaths who feel the need to keep everything copywritten. Ever. Notice why you aren't seeing anything from the Olympics right now. It's because we don't want our fucking channel taken down. Maybe it's time for you to admit it to yourself, Kurt. Maybe it's time to open the closet door, oh, Kurt. No! Number six, multiple musical moments. Speaking of copyright, it's a fucking bitch. There's been plenty of musical moments over the years from rock concerts to the ICP showing up to New Day's Empire State of Mind bit to even Elias recently doing the little White Stripes tuning. <laughs> Fuck, dude, 
even every single time Sandman came out to the ring, instead of getting to enjoy Metallica's Enter Sandman, if you go back on the network now to any of his matches, you're just stuck with some generic ripoff. Thankfully, most of WWE's music is provided by in-house compositioners like Jim Johnston and C. Foss, however you fucking say that, but unfortunately for WWE, any time it isn't, basically means it's getting cut. Number 5, WWE Idol. You know off that name exactly what this is, even if you didn't know what it was, and yes, it's that terrible. An all-star lineup of pro wrestling randoms coming out doing bad covers of musical classics. Great. Dude, the women involved weren't even professionally trained for their own job. What made you think they had any chance in hell of entertaining with a live microphone and no singing skills. Superstars from Jillian Hall to the goddamn Iron Sheik showed up to give their pathetic renditions of songs like Memories from fucking Cats. Why? Who needed this in their life? Was it fucking Linda? Did Linda want this? Is that why you did it, Vince? Is that why you're the way you are? Is Linda the weird one behind the scenes? Because I fucking doubt it, you psycho. <laughs> Nikolai, Nikolai, that was, that was classic. Number four, Hornswoggle McMahon. Things are looking up, Mr. McMahon, but not for you, for your son. Hornswoggle. Just think about those two names together for a little while. Just let them sit in a pot together, maybe stir it up a little bit, marinate it. Try to just picture the end result. Try to picture... The end product that WWE were originally going for here, alright? Hornswoggle McMahon, the little Earl, the little Earl, and the little Earl, oh, it, this is so hard. The little Earl, the little Earl, illegitimate and bastard son of Vince McMahon, I'd really like to know where this was supposed to go. Well, the illegitimate son angle was a very contrived plot to get Mr. Kennedy over, but after he was revealed in a big steroid scandal, Vince's mindset was to keep the plan in place and instead just replace who it was about. So naturally, he went to fucking Hornswoggle. Why? Linda, was this you? Mr. McMahon's son is Hornswoggle! Number three, the death of Vince McMahon. Well, if any of them were Linda, <laughs> was probably this one. If you were curious about me mentioning the previous plot to get Mr. Kennedy over and how all that went down, Holy fuck are you in for it. Back in 2007, Vincent Kennedy McMahon aired a segment where he slowly walked around backstage between the entire roster lined up on either side of him. It, it, was, it was really strange. Everyone could tell something was wrong, uh, especially Paul London who was caught smiling and fired for it, but that's an entirely dumbass story for another day. Today's story focuses more on where Vince was walking directly into a limousine, where he sat down for a few moments with his foot outside of the <laughs> car, really obvious that something dumb was happening. Before he shuts the door, he's completely enclosed inside, and what happens the second that happens? What happened when he closed the door? Vince McMahon exploded. He exploded. No, like, th look at this, he's exploding. And then next week, he appeared on Raw, because wrestling's fucking stupid. Number two, the big boss man's hanging, and for obvious reasons, next up on the list is that time The Undertaker tied a noose on top of Helena Cell and hung the big boss man from it. Believe it or not, I'm not too sure this match is going to hold up too well in the PG era. The original moment taking place at WrestleMania 15 was pretty poorly received at the time. I mean, it was just stupid. WWE showed us a live murder on television. The literal hanging of Big Boss Man. It wasn't, it wasn't even television. It was WrestleMania. Dude, you had to pay money. WrestleMania is the most expensive pay-per-view. You had to pay, pro what was this, like probably 80 bucks back in the day to see a man die? What? And then he's back a month later? What? A stupid moment erased from the history books for not so much being stupid, but for being a PR nightmare. King the boss man being hung from the cell! The yeah. boss man being hung from the cell! King, could this be symbolic? It's fucking stupid. And number one, Owen Hart's legacy. Maybe WWE haven't gone out of their ways to destroy the legacy of Owen Hart like they have other wrestlers 
ultimate warrior, but they've done a pretty damn shit job at putting the so deserved spotlight where it belongs. Owen Hart may just go down as one of the greatest in-ring workers and best people to have around behind the scenes. Fuck that. He might not. He will. He already goddamn has. But unfortunately, due to his controversial death being pretty much entirely on the fault of WWE's production, you really don't see him get mentioned much these days, which is especially off-putting considering how highly valued Bret Hart and the entire Hart family name is. It's just, it's just not settling well in that pot. Rest in peace, Helen. Rest in peace. No. And those are 10 pages WWE tried ripping out of their history book. What are your thoughts? Let us know in the comments down below after liking the video, subscribing to the channel, and notifications, and that bell.